for another episode of Jim's Lama Garden. Okay, quick one on dahlias then. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to plant these um, dahlias. Now you saw me planting the um, the dahlias that um, that I've had for a few years, a couple of weeks ago. But these are these are new ones that I bought from Wilco today for a pound. So um, you know you don't re you shouldn't really pay too much for dahlia uh, bulbs. You know, a pound you know is, is a good price. So inside your bag, what you're going to get is um, the actual um, sort, of, sort of tubers or whatever. Now, as you can see in here, I've got a couple. Which is sort of so. What I want to do is I'm going to plant them separately, but that's the main one. Now, as you can see, you know what you're going to be looking for is nice firm tubers on there. You know, no sort of um, soft bits or any damaged bits. If there are any damaged bits on there that you haven't spotted in the shop before you bought it, cut them off, get them out of the way. So, like if that one was damaged, for example, I'd just get a pair of secateurs, chop that off, get it out of the way. It's not going to grow. So, so what you want well, for something that big, you need a pot about that big. This is a uh, what's six, seven inch pot. Um, now, if you're starting them off like this, you don't need um, brand new compost, but what I'll do is I'll just show you um, this one with, with some new compost. What I normally do is use the compost I've grown um, the tomatoes in last year. So I typically put that one on side, on one, one side and use that. So first you want to do is put a bit in, in the bottom. So, this is um, this is clover compost I'm using, so I'm just going to put a bit in in the bottom. You don't want too much. So I've put about uh, about two or three inches of, of compost in the bottom of there. Now what you want to do is obviously that's the top of the plant there. Obviously that's where the stalk's going to grow, and these are the roots which go into the bottom. So it's all nice and dry. So what you want to do is bob that in the pot so that um, like that. So it's in the middle of the pot and it's facing up. Okay, so that's obviously that's where it's going to grow from. Then what you want to do is just just get the get the roots nice and flat, and then put some more compost on the top of that like that. And what I always like to do is leave the stalk actually sticking out of the compost. Now you don't need much. You're only going to start them off in here. So as you can see, there's the little stalk sticking out. They're only going to start off in here, um, and uh, you know as soon as they start to grow, you're going to get them outside. So. Uh, you know that's that, that's not too deep. What you want to do is just give them a little bit of water just to start them off. So what I'm going to do with these bits is the, the chances are they're going to grow as well. So what I'm going to get is uh, sort of two plants of the price of one. So all I'm going to do with them is put some compost in there. Now obviously that's the top, that's the root. Um, so I'm going to put the roots down most like that. So I'm just stick them in the pot like that, if you can see. Then I'm just going to bury them. Now, you've got two choices, they can either grow or not, but if they don't grow I've not really lost anything. So I'm just um, bobbing them in there, put some compost around, and all being well they'll, they will start to grow, so I'll, I'll actually get a second plant out of this. Um, so, that's what you do at this time of the year with dahlias. Um, as soon as they've started to shoot, and the, and the, the, the sort of shoots are kind of six inches tall, you can put them outside, um, put them in a nice sunny position. Um, dahlias don't like frost, don't don't put them out if there's a chance of frost, so you don't want to be, you don't want to be planting dahlias outside until May, end of May, until uh, there's no chances of, of, of any frost coming. Now, the one thing that you need to watch with dahlias is dahlias don't like the buds getting wet, the buds as, a, as in the, the, the flower buds. If, if, um, okay, 
one step back. As soon as you've got them in the ground, make sure that the ground's nice and fertile. Um, you've got plenty of organic material in there, plenty of uh, muck, fertiliser, whatever else, so they'll grow uh, quickly. You've got to feed dahlias. Uh, they do respond really well to food. As soon as as soon as they're growing well, you know, different dahlias will grow at different sizes. Most of them are kind of two, three foot high. Some of them can get up to sort of four foot high. As soon as the plant's growing well, it'll start to throw out um, flowers, buds for, uh, for the flowers. Um, as soon as the flower starts to go over, take it off. By taking the old flowers off, it encourages the plant to make more buds, more, more flowers. So if you want a succession of flowers with dahlias, you've got to keep taking the old flowers off. If you leave them on, the plant will go into, start to shut down if you like. So to keep the flowers coming, pull the old ones off. As soon as the flower starts to go over, pull it off and within a couple of days in the summer, literally a couple of days, there'll be another flower there. Um, if it rains, the, the buds get damaged unfortunately and they start to go brown and they go all kind of squidgy. If that happens, you need to pull them off. So what you need to do every, I would say every couple of days during the summer when the, whilst the flower in, go to your dailies, if you see any, um, any buds that are damaged through, through raining, or if there's any flowers that have gone over, take them off. Don't leave them on the plant. So as soon as the flower starts to go, pull it off. Any buds that are damaged because it's been raining, pull them off. And that's the best bit of advice um, I, can, I can give you with dahlias. If you water dahlias, always water them at the bottom. Don't get a sprinkler and sprinkle all over the plant because what you'll do is you'll damage all the buds which are on it. You've got to keep the buds dry. If they get wet, they'll start to rot and get damaged. You need to take them off and you, you need to wait for some water to grow. So, if you're watering dahlias, always water them at the bottom. So, you don't want a rose, you want a, just a watering can with, you know, with no rose on the end and just water around the bottom of the plant. Um, do, keep them, do keep them watered. They do like um, a bit of water. Um, you know, they do. They don't like getting dry, basically, but, but they also don't like sitting in water, so don't overwater them. So, keep them nice and moist. Uh, try to keep the plant itself dry, just water the roots, uh, never go around them with a sprinkler. Keep them well fed. Um, during, the, during the season I would suggest that you feed them a couple of times with a water based, uh, a, a liquid based feeder. Um, things like tomato um, feed are also good for, for dahlias, so you know you can water the you know around the bottom with like tomato feed or something like that. But what you also can do is um, you know, use the use the juice from your wormery, or you can use um, um, you know you can actually um, get proper daily food, or, or or just the stuff that you get, you know, baby bio or stuff like that. What you can do is put a bit of that in there and water them that. But keep them well watered, keep them well fed. Um, you know, a couple of three times in the season, and as you're walking past them, if you see any damaged flowers, you know, flowers that have gone over, or you see any damaged buds, take them off the plant. That's all, that, and that and that's literally all you need to do with dahlias. If if you follow those few simple rules, dahlias will 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 flower beautifully, and they are an absolutely fantastic plant to have in the garden. They are really beautiful. You get some really nice varieties. This is one of my favourites, um, but you do get pretty much every colour of the rainbow in dahlias, and uh, they are a fantastic plant. They grow really quickly. They're really nice, lush. Um, you know, and if you do look after them, it'll just be flower after flower after flower, after flower. and the, the the actual flowering season is you know is, is really long. Um, when it comes to the end of the year, what you need to do, I would suggest, is dig them up out the ground, um, turn them upside, get all the soil off, turn them upside down, let them dry off, keep them in the shed over the winter, and again, do do as I've done here. Uh, for next year and then plant them out in May and then away you go again. So if you look after a daily bulb it'll 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 serve you for life. Um, keep them well fed, watered and pull all the flowers and buds off and, and you'll be uh, you'll be fine. Okay so just do a few of the questions. Um, uh, the first one comes from um, from Mark um, and he was saying about he's going to use um, rather than using coke bottles, he's going to use paper towel rolls to put his parsnips in. To be honest with you, Mark, I've tried this before, and uh, the thing you need to be careful of with the paper paper towel rolls, or toilet roll in, as if you like, uh, the um, what you can get is the uh, the paper rolls kind of go all sort of mouldy, and that's if you're not careful. So uh, I I tend to avoid doing that now. I did try it for a couple of years, but they always tended to go sort of mouldy. Now. 
the advantage of doing of, of using these is when when you put them in the ground, what you can do is plant the whole thing in the ground, and obviously the cardboard will sort of rot away if you like as the as the parsnip grows. So they are good in that sense. But whilst you've got them in the greenhouse, you can find that you get this mould forming on them. So that's that, that's one thing to um, to you know to be careful of. Um, next comment comes from um, Slash, and he was saying about uh, when you're going to plant uh, the runner beans. Depends which part of the country you're in. I always plant my run of beans sort of at the beginning of May um, in, in an aim to plant them out at the end of May. So what I always do is, um, with, with regard to the beans, is I plant the beans at the beginning of May in the square pots. Um, and then uh, what I do is have them in the greenhouse. And then during sort of the middle of May, what I'll do is I'll put up the, 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 uh, the, the, the bean poles and stuff like that. And then towards the end of May, depending on what the weather's like, if the weather's nice and warm or the ground's warm, I'll actually put them out a bit earlier. But uh, what I'll do is I'll plant uh, them out, um, you know, towards the end of May. And then, um, if, if I'm being absolutely honest with you, you've not got a lot to gain from growing them any earlier than that. What I found is last year I actually planted some beans in um, April. Um, I got a bit ahead of myself to with it, and I planted them sort of mid-April, and then. They were starting to get a bit pot bound to once we were going to put them out. So I, I chanced my arm and I put them out too early, and uh, luckily we didn't have any frost. But the the, uh, the the seeds that I planted in May, like I do normally, within a couple of weeks had caught up with the earlier um, planted ones. So to be honest with you, in, in all honesty, hang fire until sort of beginning of May um, to plant your beans because there's nothing to be gained from growing them any earlier than that. Um, and beans grow really quickly anyway, so within sort of um, Within six weeks, they're at the top of the poles and starting to flower anyway. So really, you've got nothing to gain. You, you know, you won't get a, a, a longer growing season by planting them any earlier, in my experience. Uh, next comment comes from Brian Hubbard, and he was talking about propagating um, herbs and that from seeds and stuff. And yes, you're right, uh, Brian. I always typically grow, um, as you know, I you know I grow. Um, uh, there's a rosemary plant here that I grew last year from uh, from a from a cutting. Uh, this one here. Um, and I've also got obviously there's a lot of um, um, there's there's a lot of lavender as well that I've grown from from uh, cuttings. And as you know, last year I grew a lot from seed. The reason I got the sage plant was for the price of them, and I haven't got all the um, I, I don't know anybody else with a sage plant now. So I thought, bloke, I'll just buy it. So that's that's why I bought it. I thought I'll just bob it in, and then jo um, jo jobs are good really. But um, you're right. I do normally propagate things from other cuttings or seeds, herb wise. But um, this time round, I just I just thought I'd buy the plant to it. So next comment comes from Mr. Um, Fergus Ferris, I think you, you, you pronounce it. And um, um, thank you for your comment. I think it's your first comment you put on the channel. And he was saying that um, he um, he's seen some spades and forks in Lidl, um, which is the you know the German um, shop. And uh, he was saying that they are really good. So I've not seen them myself. Um, I'll probably go near a little next week, so I'll have a look myself. But uh, I just thought to put a comment out. Um, Mr. Um, Fergus Ferret said that um, he uh, he had a look at these forks and um, spades. So if you are thinking of buying a fork and spade, I look at the ones in the middle because apparently they're quite good. Uh, next one comes from Tina and Jason down at Allotment Up Cycling, and they were saying about the grow wall. <coughs> so I showed you this grow wall last, last week, and they were saying that obviously because I, I grow organically on the allotment. Grow more isn't organic. Um, I I use grow more on, on a number of things. None of it's in the allotment. I was just making the point that you can get it from your allotment society. But um, so yeah, I I use grow more in the basically in the garden on the flowers and the in the borders and that. Obviously, when you grow in flowers and that, you don't really want to put chicken book in there and stuff like that. So I always grow all the chicken book and that goes on the vegetables, um, and the uh, the grow more goes on the things like the lawn and the um, the front garden. And uh, like when I'm putting the, the dailies in, I always put a handful of um, grow more in there with them just to you know mix it up in the soil. And then when I'm putting out the, the calendulas and the flowers and stuff like that, I'll always put them in the front garden as well. So that's where the grow more goes basically, it doesn't go on the allotment. Um, <clears throat> next one comes from, um, next comment comes from Sandy Moth, and she says she's got a problem with ivy. I completely and utterly um, understand where you're coming from. Ivy is a complete pain. Um, it, it, there are various varieties of um, ivy. Some of them are really um, uh, grow quickly and spread like wildfire. Um, 
an ivy is a real pain. It, it damages brickwork, it damages fences. Um, I've got it in the garden um, in a couple of places and I do my damnedest to kill it. There's not really an easy way around to killing it. Um, what I would suggest you do is um, cut it off at the roots. Um, if you if it's if it's um, if it's in like mine, if it's if it's underneath the fence or if it's underneath the hedge or something like that, what I suggest you do is get a saw or secateurs or whatever and cut it all off at the roots. Let it die off, and then pull it off the shed or pull it out of the fence that it's in or the um, the sheds or whatever. I've got it grown at the back of my chicken hut, and every year I go around and cut it. I go around next door and cut it all off at the roots, and that's all you can do to control it really. As soon as it's got a hold, ivy is, is quite difficult to get rid of. And all, and all you can keep doing is just exhausting the plant. So if you dig the roots out, the likelihood is you're going to leave bits of roots in and that will grow again. Um, so the best thing I can suggest you do is cut it off at the ground and then go back a few weeks later and any shoots that are coming through, cut them off again. And if you keep cutting them off, you'll exhaust the plant and kill it. Um, if you try and pull, pull it off the, um, the walls or the... Uh, what's saying there is little suckers on there that sucker on um, it is actually easy to get it off when it's still alive uh, but if you let it die off a few weeks you will find it'll just come off so what I typically do is cut stuff off the ground leave it a few weeks then look at the plant if it's started to die off you know you've got that bit of the plant you can pull it all out um, if it still looks healthy and it's still growing you know that you've missed some and it's connected to the ground somewhere so basically look around again and cut it off and then all you need to do then is just keep going back and then cut it out if it is the type that flowers and drops the seed on the ground and you get little seedlings all you can do I'm afraid is dig them out um, I wouldn't resort to pesticide, uh, uh, weed, uh, weed killers or anything like that all you need to do is go around with a um, fork or whatever and just winkle them out and, and, and get rid of them don't compost it because they'll just grow again um, either put it in a bag and take it down the tip or get it in your green bin and, and you know get rid of it that way that's the best bit of advice i can i, I can say for ivy um, and never think of planting ivy ivy is a quick fix if you got i think um i think you said that you planted it to grow over a shed to hide a shed yes um, I, I can completely understand where you're coming from and it will quickly cover a shed but unfortunately it doesn't stop it just keeps going so um, uh, personally I would advise you either take it out altogether or every year you need to you know, give it a good cut back um, to control it but it is a very voracious plant and it will take over everything if you're not careful uh, next comment comes from uh, Marina Wilson she was asking how to grow dahlias as, as I've explained from the bottom I'll, I will show you I'm, I'm going to be planting these um, today so I'll, I'll do a quick video clip on that to, 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 to uh, explain how to grow them and how to look after them in the year but uh, but yeah that, that'll be coming up uh, Marina and the next one comes from Springular 39204 uh, asking about rose seed now it's been a few years since I've grown roses from seed but I have done it in the past and I've grown I've grown wild roses from seeds and basically the way you do it is you get the rose hip and the rose hips like the like the, the sort of the, the berry that's formed at the back of the rose when the rose is finished. So you need to l let that develop as soon as it's ripe, and when it's ripe, you notice know, it'll be um, uh, uh, soft. You know, the, it'll go from a hard to a soft, or it'll change colour, typically red. Um, as soon as it's 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 done that, take it off the plant. Don't let it dry out. Immediately take the seed out of the rose hip. And what you need to do is get the seed out and wash the seed. Get all of the um, all of the uh, the stuff from around the seed, you know, all the sort of sap and stuff that's inside the the rose hip. So you're just left with the seed. Now, what you can do to to help this, you don't have to, but what you can do is put some um, very dilute um, hydrogen peroxide in the water that you're washing it with. Um, and what that will do, that will kill any bugs that are on there. You don't have to do that, but if you do do that, only weak, you only want about two or three percent, just a few drops in there, and then you know, sort of wash them out. Um, in there and then what you need to do then is just quickly dry the seed and get them nice and clean and then what you need to do then is, is a, um, a process called um, stratification now what this is is as I've explained to you before some seeds all you need to do is dry them and then the following year you plant them and then off they grow again other seeds have to go through a winter because there's a there's a little um, there's a little part of the seed that when it freezes it cracks um, in, in some seed other seeds need to be kept moist, other seeds need to be um, 
and go through a cold period before they start to grow again. So this is this is just the way Mother Nature's, you know, this you know it's just the way the uh, the, uh, the plants have evolved. So roses are one of these, and you have to go through this process of what's called stratification. Now the way to do this is get yourself some tissue, get a get a little tray, something like this, um, which is basically what. Um, you get mushrooms in, or, or you know, blueberries and stuff from a supermarket. Put yourself a little bit of um, uh, kitchen towel in there, and then slightly moist. So, what I would suggest you do is, is get the get the kitchen towel, put it under the tap, take it out, and then place it in there. You don't want it to be absolutely soaking wet; you just want it to be damp. Put the as soon as you've done that, put the rose seeds on top of the, um, the paper, and then put it in a bag and then put it in the fridge and leave it in the fridge for several weeks and what this does is it, is it generates the, the, the damp cool um, conditions that a rose hip would get in nature in the wild and what it does is the, the seed um, basically sits in that sort of damp cold condition and that will set the seed off ready for next year so when you take it out of the fridge after several weeks I would say I'd leave it in the fridge for probably at least three or four weeks, to be honest with you. As soon as you've done that, bring it out, get yourself um, a little pot. You don't want a big pot, you only want, um, I mean, you, you could actually do it in something like that, you know, just the little cells. Um, some compost, um, fine compost, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd use some uh, compost like, you know, the fine, fine compost like that. It doesn't have to be irrigated or anything like that. You've got compost on you, don't you? Um, and then plant the seed, nice and firm compost, and plant the seed in the middle. Put two or three seeds in the, in the pot, in the middle of the pot. And then you just want a sprinkle of compost on top of that. Only, I don't know, three or four millimetres, quarter of an inch on top. And then, so basically, what's the best way to explain? Get a, get a pot, yeah, put the compost in, and then get another, put the seed in and some more compost on top of there. Then get another pot and pat it down. So it's, so it's, it's reasonably nice and firm. Moisten this, don't, you don't need to be too wet, moisten it, and then what you need to do then is increase the temperature. You want the temperature to be around uh, 20, 20, 21 degrees centigrade, so on a windowsill inside the house would probably be ideal. Fahrenheit, you're probably talking about 60, what's that, 62, 63 degrees for Fahrenheit. Um, and then as soon as, as, soon as the, the, the seed warms up, it'll germinate and away it goes. Don't try and skip the, um, the stratification process because the seeds won't germinate. You have to put the seeds on the, on the wet paper in a, it, it, on a tray like that, as, as I explained, with a bag over it in the fridge. If you don't do that, the seeds are unlikely to germinate. You've got to go through that cold, damp um, period of sort of three or four weeks for the seed to, to germinate properly. Then as soon as you bring it out, put it in the compost, bring it into the warm, it will then germinate. If you don't do that, the likelihood is it won't germinate. So that's the trick to growing roses. Um, roses aren't the only thing you have to do that with, but roses are most certainly one of them. So if you want to grow roses, as I say, go through the stratification process by putting it on some damp paper in a little tray, put a bag over it, put it in your back of your fridge, forget about it for a month, get them out, get the seeds out, put them in a little um, pot, um, and then a bit of compost, moist, Keep them at about 21 degrees, and then you'll see them shoot. As soon as the plants get to, uh, I don't know, probably three or four inches high, what I've suggested you then is take them out and pot them up, because they can get quite pot bound quickly. Uh, roses, they do get quite a, a reasonable amount of root on them. So what I would suggest is you go to a, a bigger pot, you know, something more like, uh, something more like that, or a bit bigger, um, and then um, plant them up in there. Don't feed them really until they kind of get to I don't know, about six inches high, um, and they start to bush out. As soon as they start to bush out, and they, you know, the, you know, they are growing quite quickly, you'll need to give them a bit of feed. Uh, there are special feeds out there for roses and stuff, which which is probably what I recommend. Um, but uh, you know, you can feed them with general um, plant food um, or you know flower feed. But um, you want to uh, for the first year, you want it to grow its roots and its and its stalks mainly. And um, then the second year you want it to, you know, develop its flower. So, you know, use the right fertilisers to suit. But uh, that's the best bit of advice I can give you for growing roses from seed. Okay, quick note on the chickens. Um, I've taken all the the, uh, the coverings off the, um, the coop. 
so that they've got uh, plenty of light, which is important for them this time of year. And obviously, um, from food point of view, also they're getting lots of the allotments at the moment. That's a that's a bit of the Nero kale down there that was left over, and uh, they'll also be getting some uh, um, kale um, later on today. So they are doing well. So just real quick update on the chickens. So, I hope this episode has been of some use to you. Please don't hesitate to put any comments or questions you've got below, and I'll always get back to you. And I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's Love Garden.